Hello, everyone. And uh, I just wanted to say to Helen Vitsikovalis uh, that I was on the Patris ship too, the Greek Patris ship, but in 1967, I was on it with my family. So that, was, uh, that brought back some uh, memories. Um, one of the challenges facing migrants and indigenous people is getting the balance and the mix right between the present, past and future. Multicultural media has been navigating the space between nostalgia and the evolution of community engagement with mainstream Australia. This space also determined the engagement with families and their younger uh, generations. Uh, migrants who rely on content from overseas are no longer able to ignore the content from Australian sources available on a diversity of platforms now at a time of their choosing. As a multicultural journalist, I had to sharpen my juggling skills since I started with SBS, uh, SBS radio in 1975 in order to try and touch the lives of the older generation, the recently arrived, the uh, more established migrants from more than 22 Arabic countries, thinking about critical issues such as language versus dialect, uh, challenging outdated beliefs, pushing the boundaries, attracting the youth, dealing with the impact of uh, the insensitive way sometimes the mainstream media dealt with issues that uh, had to do with the Arabic community, and the list goes on. So for me, my, my vocation was my vacation. I was one of the lucky ones to have worked for SBS with journalists who spoke more than 68 languages. It was, it was a big multicultural family, a harmonious version of Australia, yet dynamic and quite dynamic, I could say, in treating multicultural issues. So I'm so heartened to, to, to say that multicultural broadcasting has come a long way since then. To me, though, the need for Australian content is even more critical now as overseas media, and it was highlighted in the earlier panel, uh, is readily available. Uh, multicultural journalism plays a key role in empowering communities as they become more informed, confident with their Australian identi identity and astute political participants in this um, vibrant democracy. From stories I've covered over the years, I found the margin where a community moves closer to mainstream, improves with content, treated professionally, bound by the Australian journalistic standards and values, and well-resourced. This was particularly evident as I, was, as I covered sensitive, controversial issues um, as global events, um, of global events that challenged the youth and placed the entire community under pressure and scrutiny. So nation, nation building is about migrants and their children feeling proud of their heritage, measured against their individual actions and not stereotyped as a reaction of political developments overseas and being collectively punished for the actions of other people. Media can play a key role to prevent domestic and global events from dividing communities and at times inflaming cross-cultural tensions. For example, the Arabic community suffered dealing with the reactions in 1990, media and the public reactions to the Gulf War, the SCAF gang rapes, if people remember, in 2000, September 11th, the, Bami bombing, uh, the Bali bombings, the introductions uh, of uh, the introduction of anti-terrorism uh, laws, the in, uh, invasion of Iraq, and the list goes on. Stereotyping and racism remain one of the challenging issues as Cronella riots demonstrated and the impact on Australia's reputation. Reconciliation and community building to date remain the answer. Meaningful promotion of multiculturalism needs programs to combat the key, key concerns of racism and racial vilification across Australia. Multiculturalism is vital to our economy and culture. Nobody needs to be convinced about that. Uh, what Almost a quarter of Australians are born overseas, with almost half uh, having one parent born overseas. 
Government policies and the media can play a key role in racial equality too. Resources need to be made available to report and deal with racism. Promotion of multiculturalism starts with diversity in leadership roles in government agencies, culturally appropriate services for new migrants and the aged care. Immigration debate uh, and asylum seeker debate needs to be in context cross-cultural awareness programs for families and schools. I don't want to uh, speak for long. I'm uh, sharing this uh, uh, discussion that we're going to have on multicultural media, but I just want to say that Australia continues to be my lucky country. I am indebted to the opportunities offered to my grandparents, my parents, myself and my children. I'm also grateful to SBS for uh, the opportunity to be creative for more than 37 years. I'm proud of all Australians of any background who dare to make a difference. Like our next uh, panel speakers, uh, Jerry Gigardis, a journalist with the National Indigenous Times, freelancer, author and academic, PhD lawyer, researcher in Australian custodial systems and deaths in custody with two masters in unveiling racism and the way forward. Jerry is a social justice human rights campaigner known also for his activities all over the world, uh, wheelchairs for kids. Um, also our um, panel speaker, Simon, uh, CEO of Singtao, Simon Ko, CEO of Singtao Daily, who migrated to Australia in 1998. Uh, Simon is the Chief Executive Officer of uh, the Singtao Daily. Uh, he also worked for, uh, at Hong Kong for TVB Television and uh, MR, MTR advertise, Advertising Company before Singtao Daily. Also our speaker, uh, Jason Ko, he's a publisher and editor of the Korean Times Australia, an authority on Korean community affairs in New South Wales and his media career includes experience as editor of Hoju Donga Korean Daily, vice president of the Korean Chamber of Commerce in Eastwood, Epping, and West Ride District. So I'll welcome our first speaker. After our speakers, we'll have another opportunity to ask some questions. Thank you.